This is Joe with JoesAstrophoto.com. Today we're going to cover all the ways you could stretch your image in PixInsight. I'm not sure if you realized, I didn't, that there's five different ways to stretch an image in PixInsight. So today I was going to cover those five ways and then I was hoping to hear from you on the way that you stretch your image in PixInsight and also uh, what your favorite way is. The image we're going to be using today is the Orion Nebula. It's an SHO that I purposely overexposed to get all of the surrounding nebulosity. Um, of course, the core is blown out, and, and that was to be expected. I wanted to gather all of the nebulosity in the region in narrow band, and I was going to go back the next night and take some lower exposure images so that I could merge the two together and that you would still see all the nebulosity but without the blown out core. Unfortunately, that's when the clouds came in and it's been several days since I've been able to, to do any imaging. So I thought I would use this as our guinea pig image to test the different ways that you could stretch an image in PixInsight. And I also just wanted to see what data I did have on the subject so that I would know uh, I would be able to gauge how much to turn down my auto or my exposures later. The first method we're going to cover is adaptive stretch. Now the way I've used this in the past is I've always used contrast protection. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on with this checkbox right here. And in the past I've also used the region of interest, but I don't think we're going to cover that in today's tutorial. So we need to turn the screen stretch off so that we get an accurate indication of what we're doing and we'll turn on the real-time preview. And what I do is I will change the value in this box um, going more negative until I get to the point where the image explodes like this. So then I'll bring the slider over here and now I know that it's, um, my exponent should be negative 5 and somewhere in here is going to give me what I'm looking for for my stretch. And I just play with the slider until I find that. And that looks pretty good right there. Now the contrast protection um, basically just protects the highlighted areas from really from getting washed out. Um, and in this particular image, we want to keep everything about mid-tone. I don't want to lose the nebulosity around the core because that's what I'm trying to catch in this particular um, set of data. And but I still want to keep the core from blowing out too bad so that I can merge the two together at a later time. But as you can see as I move the contrast bar, it doesn't take much to just drop the image back down. And you could leave this here and then take this bar and start to move this one up as well. It's really playing back and forth with, with the two bars and looking at the curve and you could see here the curve isn't really a curve, and then it moves into a curve. It's a little touchy, but I would say that's pretty good right about there. On to our second method, we're going to do the autohistogram stretch. And this one is a little rough because it doesn't give you um, a real-time preview to work with. But it's not as bad as it seems. Um, what you want to do is open up the process statistics 
and it'll tell you what your median value is for red, green, and blue. Now I did a background neutralization and a color calibration on the image already, so we don't really need these to be um, separated because that's what the background neutralization did for us, is kind of combine the RGB into what it thinks is the correct um, values. So, but what you can do is that you could set as active image and it's going to import these median values in here. So we really don't need this. This was just to show you, you don't need to open this in order to, to get this to work. And now all we really have to do is make this the joint RGB channel so that we only have to move one slider and all the colors will move at the same rate. And we just move this slider up a little bit higher than what the values are and it'll stretch the image. Um, I believe that the default is 1200. So what we can do is just um, apply this and see what our image looks like. And that did not um, do it. So I'll undo this and we're gonna move this up to about um, 0.2 and try it again. It's getting better, but if you notice the, the background is stretching um, with our nebulosity. So in order to fix that, we need to turn on histogram clipping. And I think I'm gonna change this from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1. and keep the point to and see what changes. And now it's starting to look a lot better. Um, again, this core, I purposely took the image to blow out the core a little bit and get the rest of the um, hydrogen alpha around the Orion Nebula. So this isn't quite what we need yet either. And the background is still a little bit too light so we'll undo and I'm going to change the clipping up to about two and I'm going to bring this up to 0.22 yeah that's still not ideal um, did I say the last method was my least favorite. It might be this method that's my least favorite. Um, so let's put this to 0.3. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's okay. It, it's an okay stretch. You, you would have to continue to play with these. Maybe bring this up to 0.3. That might be overdoing it. Um, you know, on the stretch method, I'm using the gamma. Um, you probably want to use the rational interpolation. I think that gives it a cleaner look. And I, yeah, it's a big difference. And now it's too much, too much. So let's turn this down and try about a 0.2 again where I had it. And that's looking better. But you'd have to keep playing with it. I mean, I wouldn't keep it like this uh, moving forward, but this is just to show you. And this is your second method of stretching. Our third way of doing a stretch is the mass stretch. And I've used this a few times. I found that um, on RGB images, the mass stretch can really keep the colors um, from changing on you as opposed to almost any other form of stretching. So at least I've got um, a little bit more use out of the mass stretch than our previous two that we've covered. Um, in order to get this to work, first you do a screen stretch and you find an area um, that's completely black. There's no stars, there's no nebulosity. And I really picked a bad image to um, demonstrate this on because the auto stretch really has a lot of nebulosity in here. Um, I've really seemed to overbake this image. 
So I'm going to try and grab this right here. Oh, I need to turn the preview on. And we'll call that pretty good. Let me zoom back out. And under background reference, we'll put in our preview one. And this is pretty good because I love the defaults in here. You almost never have to change the clipping. Um, I mean, as usual, you, you really don't want to, you want to clip as, as least as possible. And the same with uh, the target background. This always seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to um, unscreen stretch this so that we could apply our stretch and see what it looks like. What this does is that these iterations, um, it continuously uses masks to protect the bright areas of your image and then continuously, um, well, 100 times actually, for the, since that's what I have set for iterations, it will do it over and over. You can set that higher and, and the higher you go, the, the longer it's going to take produce a nicer image. Uh, I wouldn't go below 50, I would just use the default of 100. So that's a pretty good stretch compared to the last one, um, which the last two, which is really overstretched. And it's even nicer compared to the screen stretch um, because the screen stretch was a little bit too much. I'll open up my clone and we'll do a screen stretch and compare. Um, and you could see that it, this is way too bright and this is a lot better and we're going to go to the fourth way or what I call the fourth way. And really the fourth and the fifth way are really the same. Um, it's just how you do it. I thought I deleted the profile, the preview. Um, so we'll open up the screen transfer function and we'll go ahead and um, stretch it using that. And then we'll open up the histogram transformation. And basically, uh, this is the way I see a lot of people do it. And, and to me, it's too much of a stretch, but we're going to just move this up here and apply that to our image. And then we'll reset the screen transfer. And there we have our stretched image uh, automatically generated for us on the histogram transformation. And it's, it's not bad. And, you know, I've even been a little guilty of doing that for some of my luminance layers when I'm trying to extract my hydrogen alpha. Uh, I'll just quickly do that to see what it's going to look like. And sometimes I keep it that way and other times I don't. So, But what I would rather do, what I normally do, and I think that's the, a big reason that you see a lot of people do it this way as well, is that... Um, come in here and, and you do a manual stretch so that you can control how much gets clipped and how how much you want to move your midtones. I don't to me I think that that's just the best way of doing it and and I have a feeling that that's why you see a lot of other people do it. I mean here as I move my slider you look at the the shadows and you could see how much you're clipping. And this is kind of in correlation to the other methods that we were using where you, they had to clip some of the shadows. But really, I could, in this particular image, I don't think I'm gonna get away with it. Um, if I tried to leave the shadows at zero, um, too much of the background gets stretched. So I do have to clip some, but I get control over it based on how dark I want my background to be. And and the curve helps because you're looking at the curve and you know that if you come on this side of the curve, it's way too dark. And it's really hard to infer that from some of the other ways that you stretch. So let's apply this and then reset. that. 
Evet. Yeah, to me, I'm missing some of this. And if I did went back and I did the HDR like I plan on doing, I would probably come in here and stretch this a little further to get the rest of the nebulosity because I would be um, merging it with the inside that's a lot less blown out than this image. But you get the idea, and the histogram transformation, doing it manually, is by far my favorite. I feel like I have the most control. Um, that's not necessarily true because the other um, solutions that are inside of PixInsight um, definitely have their place, especially the mast stretch. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it's what you're most comfortable with and how your image looks, what you're happy with. And to me, uh, manually stretching my images with the histogram transformation is by far the best method I've found so far. Well, I went ahead and finished processing the data that I do have now. Um, it's not going to be the final image because I'm still going to go back and take some lower length um, sub-exposures and do uh, an HDR mix with what I have. But you know how it is. <laughs> I got started in it, and then I just went ahead and finished out um, what I have. So the core is still a little blown out, but I kind of like the direction this little image took. Um, it's got a lot of little imperfections um, here. I've got the micro lensing from my 1600, but overall I thought it looked pretty cool. I just wanted to share it with you. Um, what I'd like to hear from everyone is the kind of... Um, the way that they stretch in Pix and Sight, if you use Pix and Sight, or even if you use Photoshop, um, do you stretch with the levels, um, you know, and, and whatnot. So in the comments below, please uh, let me know your favorite way of stretching. Let me know if um, you use those other methods that I showed in my video um, better than I showed them, because I really don't use them that often. I just wanted to show everyone in case they were unaware that they existed. Um, because everybody always shows, you know, the manual histogram stretch. So I'd be curious. Um, definitely, please leave that in the comments below. And if you like this type of video, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.